the Bible. Is it the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Shalom, shalom, come on in. I was lost, but now I'm found. Praise the Most High. I'm a child of Israel. I heard the sound. I hear the sound. Shalom, Please brothers and sisters. Give me the strength to stand today. Zion. To Zion, to Zion. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Ricard Shiar, along with Elder, Elder Lawyer here, live for our weekly Sabbath lesson. Shabbat Shalom to the brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom, Shalom. Come on in, hit the like button, hit the like button. Boy, do we have a lesson for you today. Boy, is there a lesson for us all. Lord. All right, hit the like button. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to tell you. Being that YouTube has us on a shadow ban, <laughs> they won't allow others to know that we're actually streaming. And please, brothers and sisters, make sure you check after the broadcast to make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you from the channel, okay? Please make sure that you're still linked into the church because there's so many things going on in the earth right now. And you don't want to miss, and yeah, no one wants to miss uh, prophetically these particular lessons on how to navigate through, through the serpent's attacks against our people, right? Right? 
As you can see, the title is with it's titled Racism and the Serpent. OK, I'm going to go into that in one moment. OK, but while brothers and sisters are following in, I would like to say shalom to all of our brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, while they're following in, I'm going to make a quick announcement concerning our academy for tomorrow. But before we do that, Elder Lawyer, we can just hit it one time. Yes, the sir. Hebrew Credo. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allahayanawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allahayanawa Ahaya Akad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. For those who are fairly new. OK, the only thing we said was the Hebrew credo from Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter here. O Israel, the Lord, our God is one. I'm translating that because the Bible say no one should speak in tongues without what? Without it being interpreted. OK, without an interpreter. So if you see someone speaking in tongues and no one is, in, is interpreting you're listening to the tongue of the serpent or the snake. I don't care how people are claiming they're feeling. Okay. They are possessed by demons. That's what's going on there. But I digress. All right. I digress. Let's go into what we're going to be talking about in a moment. But before I go there, uh, all praises be to the most high for giving us another opportunity, brothers and sisters, and a blessed Sabbath to come before you all. OK, none of this would be possible without our God. When it says here, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one. There's only one God. The God of the Hebrews, the God of Israel. There's only one God, folks. And there's only one path to that God. And that's whom the world ignorantly at this present time calls uh, 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 have named him Jesus Christ. His name is Yeshua, but he's the anointed savior that was sent that we read about in the four gospels. Okay. He's the only way to the father. So when it says the Lord, our God is one, it's not looking at them as two separate entities to be worshiped separately. Like you see in the Catholic church, we're going to go there in a moment. Christ came not down here to do his will, but the will of him that sent him. Christ was sent to bring us back to the father. He's the only way. He's the only hope for this world. Now, in highlighting that, understand, brothers and sisters, you have many people out there with these false religions claiming that there's many ways to God. That's a lie. When you see what the Buddhists are doing, the, the Hindus are doing, the Asians are doing. This is satanic religion out in plain sight. When you see what Muslims are doing at the Kaaba stone and others. And hey, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to, to offend anyone in here. Okay. But also... And I'm listen, and let me make it clear. I'm not talking about the people personally. One second, let me get this. I'm not talking about the people personally, brothers and sisters, who grew up in these particular religions. The majority of people go, uh, you know, that are under these particular ideologies, they're just doing what their parents taught them to be right in in searching for searching for God on any particular spiritual path. So let me make this clear because we, we were caught up just like everyone else. Okay. So when I say this, brothers and sisters, let's not try to take things personal when it comes to you align, you, you being aligned with the religion that have some good stuff in it, but really it's the working of the devil through a high priesthood. Right now, Christ is the only way. Let me make that clear. And guess what? We have to get out of this black thing and we need to 
be on the black consciousness, that's straight garbage. That's rubbish. That's a lot of arguing and debate leading nowhere while the enemy is destroying our people. If they can't come together and always debate on what's right or wrong, how can we actually listen to people who are confused concerning a path when they can't even get on one accord? And then attack anyone like Hebrews and others who are saying, well, at least with the Bible, there's a moral code that we can all respect one another with. And they'll leave and fight against that. Mm -hmm. They'll even fight against that. They fight amongst themselves asking uh, about, about the, you know, the, you know, what's on the, the hydroglyphs of the pyramids and, and, and whether or not they can decipher this paper and all this other garbage that means nothing for how our people are getting destroyed right now. It's a grift, it's a hustle, and it comes from what? The same spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. The conscious community have been a joke in our community for so long. And guess what? I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy sent them into us to confuse us the same time they sent Islam. At least on the surface, we had Christianity. And even though it wasn't perfect at the time, we were united under one spirit, one moral code. And we were better off like that than, than grifting off into all these conscious confusions and destructions. Dr. York pillaging on our people, uh, dealing with little girls and all these others. Now they got polite. His, of course, his disciple doing the same exact thing. While the conscious, let me tell you, there's, the conscious community is unconscious. Christ is the way. Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. And I'm going into that and I'm saying that, I'm making it short now. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He's one God and Christ was sent to show the path towards that God. Any other religion, any other ideology that gets in the way of that particular understanding of how to get to God and how to walk on earth according to him, is of the devil. So I'm not here to attack anyone personal, but now, like I said yesterday, we must try the spirit and filter everything through the Bible. Okay, because Satan himself, even Satan himself appears as an angel of light. Now, before I go into that, hit the like button, right? Let me state this real quick. Uh, we'll be going into a new Hebrew and Bible Academy starting tomorrow. If you haven't enrolled, I ask you that you get in because if not, you're going to miss some serious information, especially when it comes to the news. Elder Lawyer put together, you know, a new way of going into the Hebrew as far as improving what? Conversational Hebrew on the next level so that we can speak to each other in our ancient Phoenician tongue. Okay. Also, I'll be going into tomorrow. That's right. The creation of the universe. I don't deal with no Hindu madness, which is satanic. I don't deal with no Asian religion. All of that Asian religion, transgenderism, and all of that, folks, is the religion of Satan. We don't deal with none of that. We deal with the Bible as it is written. And I'm going into the creation of the universe. And I'm going to also be touching on what? I'm going to be touching on spiritual focus. Who are the angels who work on the good side? And who are the angels that's under Satan destroying our people in the earth today? Because there was a war in heaven, folks. There was a war. And the dark side is here to destroy the image of God, which is man. We were made to judge him. We were made to judge the fallen angels who came to this realm pre-flood. Okay? Okay. That's the real purpose of man, to stand in judgment and power on the right side, on the right side of judgment against the evil on this earth. And guess what? When you're operating like that, and brothers, when you're operating like that in your true purpose, you don't have to ask someone or beg someone to follow your way or to please be down with me. Can't you see that? Can't you see that I'm doing the right way? Any brother that's trying to get a woman to see things your way, you, you got this whole thing wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Why can't she see? She's disobedient. She's, listen, if you're with the most high and full power, the last thing you're thinking about is a woman that's not following you. The Bible, even Christ said, remember Lot's wife. If Lot would have turned around with his wife, he would have been turned into a pillar of stone also. Our true purpose is with God. Okay? Women are the gift the Most High gives to help meet our position for him. That's what woman is for. Woman is from man. Woman was made to help me with my mission. So any guy sitting around here talking about, man, I don't know what's going on with this relationship. You know, I wish she, she would read. You know what, brother, if you got someone that's working contrary to you, guess what? Even frustrating, frustration, frustration in of itself is still attention. She'll, she'll steal from you. Mm -hmm. If she want attention and frustration gets that, guess what? She'll use frustration. She will go against you just to get that, that negative attention. Okay? Again, your power is with God. And the last thing you're thinking about is whether or not a woman is going to follow what you have to say if you're in, in power, in sync with the heavens. Because why? At the end of the day, she still that's her temple. She still have her own mind. So at the end of the day, if she don't want to follow, hey, let's, let, let, hey, what happens when the judge comes? Right? So the whole deal is, brothers, focus on your purpose with the most high. And women or a woman is just what? A byproduct of, the, of your power. She comes in this, to help supplement your direction. And you know what? She'll love doing it. It takes so much pressure off of her because now she has a leader. And if she don't want that leader, hey, see what the world have to, has to offer. Okay. So speaking of that, let's go into what we'll be talking about real quick. All right. Let's go into it. In the academy, man's purpose. Uh, we're going to go into man's purpose. God's wisdom intended for man. What, what is your purpose? Okay. And guess what? It's about obtaining the wisdom. The most high instilled in the ancients, the prophets, the righteous Chaldeans. Well, we're going to give wisdom classes for our men. And of course, sister's going to be in there too. So you're going to be taking a lot of that wisdom up too. But we're going to focus on man's purpose that's number one number two the purpose of a woman showing her the power of femininity by example the holy spirit how the holy spirit works in total conjunction with god with god three how to apply the law of moses through christ we're going to show you that we should not be following moses we follow christ Moses followed Christ. Okay, so even a lot of Hebrews and others got that backward. They think following the law is following Christ. You off. You have to follow the law through Christ because through the law, there's grace. Now, grace doesn't give us an excuse to sin on purpose, but grace gives us an opportunity to do what? Understand the law according to how it was intended when it was given. The law wasn't made for death. If it wasn't for us breaking the law, guess what, folks? There would be no uh, uh, death penalty in the law. If, if, if people didn't commit for fornication, steal, kill, and all these others, there would be no death penalty. Mm -hmm. So the law wasn't perfect. The law was made so that we can actually understand how to interact righteously one amongst another. But it had a what? It had a fault in it. It had death in it. So it wasn't perfect. So anybody looking at the law strictly through Moses, your mind is broke. That's right. 
Your mind is broke. You must screen the law through Christ, understanding the grace. Because under Moses' law, if you make a mistake, you don't have an opportunity to be baptized and receive a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. You're dead. So I'm going to go into that in the academy. I'm going to go into the judgment. I'm going to go into uh, how to how to apply the law of Moses using Christ. While you're still following the law, you're also doing it. You're also doing the law. You're also doing the law. Understanding its grace. Right. And I'm saying that because you will have so many people out there who will get offended or get confused and stumble at Moses' law. They'll see you operating in the spirit of grace and they'll look at you like, hold up. Are you not following God's law? You must be wrong. Not realizing the law was meant for you to do what's right. In your conscience, and you're not supposed to put that burden on someone else. If you're doing what's right, what do you care if someone is operating in the grace of Christ? They may be doing something the most High want them to do. And let me give you an example. You may have a person that'll say, oh, uh, where's your fringes? Now, I wear fringes. I love fringes. So they'll look at the outward appearance, not realizing that I probably just came in from a place that would have what? Would have been a stumbling block if I had fringes on. I could have been coming from what? An interaction to interact for business for the church and certain things like that. Why you ain't wearing your garment? I could have been doing something that would have offended people that would have gotten in the way of my business. I'm not breaking the law because the Bible says at the end times, the most high would put the law in us. The fringes was a law to remind us of the, those laws. But if the laws are in me, I can exercise grace not to wear the fringes if it's going to become a stumbling block. That's grace. So you have people looking at you measuring you on whether or not you are a true Hebrew. That's Pharisee. So I'm going to be talking about that because the only reason people, folks, bring out certain things to try to point out whether or not you follow the law right is so that they can gain a moral high ground mm -hmm. over you so that they can claim they're better than you as a Hebrew. Right. That's the spirit of Pharisee, and you run away from that as soon as possible. That's the devil. Because you're not looking for anything good in me. My charity, how I treat other people. You're looking for something to accuse me. And that leads us to the accuser of the brethren. We're going to talk about that today. And this is why the Pharisees and scribes weren't looking at anything good Christ was doing. They were trying to check him out to see how much he's offending Moses' law mm -hmm. to cause a divide amongst the people. Watch people like that, folks. When the first thing they talk about is what you got on and all these other things. When really, that should be convicting them. If you're measuring yourself according to that law, you should make sure you're right. What care you if I'm not walking every day exactly how you walk? As long as I'm not sinning according to God's law, what business is that of yours? Mm -hmm. See? <laughs> so I'm going to be going in, into that, the grace of Christ. I'm going to also be talking about the judgment for rebellion. That's going to be a week 11 lesson. A week 11 lesson. I'm going into the judgment of rebellion. All of the scriptures on hell, including the extra biblical text. Including the extra biblical text. You don't want to miss this, folks. 
Also, I'll be exposing the dark forces of witchcraft week two. Next Sunday, I'll be exposing the dark forces of witchcraft in our lesson, Tracing the Serpent Seed. In week 12, I'll be breaking down the power of prayer and fasting. How to connect with the Almighty through fasting and praying. How did the disciples do it? How did Christ do it? Okay. How did the prophets connect with the Almighty? See, the world today, it's carnal. Under carnality, the majority of the world walking in darkness connects through drugs. They connect through drugs. They go and take something to take away what? Writer's block or they need something to help stimulate their ideas to help them uh, on how to do certain things. They are connecting to the dark side. How to connect with God through fasting and praying. And I'm going to use Christ and the disciples and all the examples. Okay. And this Sunday, before we go in the first 10 minutes, I'm going to teach brothers and sisters how to use the center column reference, how to actually read the Bible and understand it for yourself. How to go into the Bible and link precepts so you, you'll stay within the proper narrative. You can know when the you can know when the uh, the precepts or the links are right, or you can realize when the Christians have put their own links in there to try to put you under their false ideology. I'm going to show you how to do that the first ten minutes of this academy. One thing I like about this is because we're going with structured time for now on, like we used to do overseas. Everything will be finished by two p.m. By two p.m. Everything will be finished. Hebrew, news, lesson. By 2 p.m. Eastern, everything will be finished. So that we can have time, 30 minutes, to actually interact, be it Zoom or phone calls. And I'm going to make a concerted effort to keep news between 30 and 40 minutes. To make sure our lessons is one or two hours so that we can focus on the interaction of making sure brothers and sisters are getting their questions answered. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to stay within that parameter because it's important that that interaction is there and that we're not just, just rushing off due to, due to the restriction of time. So I'm going to hit the scriptures. I'm going to do what I got to do in the Bible and that's going to be it. Okay. But it's going to be well fulfilling, less extra verbiage, more scriptures and history that you need to apply in these last days, all right? So that concludes my announcements. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in to the lesson. If this interests you, brothers and sisters, go to historytimes.org. That's historytimes.org and enroll, okay? And this is what it'll look like when, when you get there, okay? Let me show you. Let me show you here. One second. Right here. Okay. I'm going to hold this up real quick. Right. Oh, I'm glad I seen this. Let me switch that out. All right. What you do is go to Google. Go to history. Times. Dot org. Type it in, and what happens? That's right, Elder Lawyer and I, we pop up right here. We'll pop up right here in front of you, as you can see. Go to historytimes.org, this will pop up, and you can enroll right here. We got brothers and sisters, the administration on standby. All right? Okay. Just go to historytimes.org, type that in, and you'll be ready. And we're chopping at the bit. It's been a while for the academy. We've been off like forever. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be, I'm going to really put something good into the, tomorrow's lesson. So make sure you're there. Go to historytimes.org. Now,
I pray that the Most High give me the patience as well as the spiritual insight to quantify quantify this lesson to a degree where, where the novice, even, even a person who've never read the Bible before, understand the depths of this particular lesson. Okay? That the Most High blessed me to have the patience to deliver what, what his people need to hear today. Racism and the serpent. When you go into this lesson, folks, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this channel and tell everyone about this particular lesson today. Tell you, I'm going to show you why. It's going to explain the reason certain things are going on geopolitically in the earth. And it's going to point out the people who are behind it today. Oh, yeah. Let me let me pull something up real quick. Let me get it real quick here. If you may. Let me get it one second. I'm going to pull something up here. And I want to show you all. Make sure you all share this today. Right? Now, I've talked about this on many occasions. I've talked about this. Let me pull it up. This image right here you see on your screen. The image you see on your screen is an image that has been worshipped I would say for hundreds of years under secret societies like your Knights Templars, a faction of the Roman Catholic Church. And it's the image of Lucifer who's worshipped by those within secret societies. Under the Freemason, he's called Jobulum or Yabulim, or Yah. That's why you have to be careful of that word because Yah doesn't denote one particular God. Satan is also a Yah. The Most High's name is Ahia. His name is Ahia, okay? Can y'all hear me clearly? Is everything good? I just want to make sure Let me turn the microphone down. Someone says the microphone sounds a little sensitive. Is it good now? Is my microphone well? Is it better now? I'm going to keep it here. I hope, hopefully it's good. All right? This particular image is worshipped by secret societies throughout the earth. Okay. And why am I going here in particular? Today's lesson, as you can see, I'm going to quote it again. Racism and the serpent. Well, the Baphomet represents, represents the God and goddess 
over all of mainstream Babylonian religion. So right out front, when you see down here, the crescent moon, that's emblematic of Islam, right? And then you have the Masonic understanding of As above, so is below. Now, what's ironic about this particular symbol is that this Baphomet isn't just worshipped amongst Arab or Muslim countries. The Hindus also has a connection with this, who are the East Indians of Babylonians. And so does the Vatican or the Roman Catholic Church. And I'm not talking about everyday Catholics who are good people who are just trying to serve according to how their family taught them. What I'm speaking of is those in high position like Jesuits. They worship a male and female Baphomet or Lucifer. Now I need you to see what, what's, in, what's in the serpent's lap. What's in this, now don't forget, this is a male being with, with women breasts, with a woman's breasts, male and female, transgenderism. Transgenderism, right? So this is what's being worshipped out in plain sight. Male and female. Right? But look at what's going on in the middle of Satan. The serpent wrapped around a staff. An apothecary. Health care. The administering of what? What they would say is medication. Right? Now, as above, so is below. So, obviously they know that there's something above. God. So they're trying to establish an, another order as in heaven under the bath for men. That's their true religion. See that? that that's the, they go to pharmacy side. Now, when you look inside your Rite Age, your Walgreens and all these others, you see these other people coming into our neighborhoods over the pharmacies. Right? Now, I'm not going to talk about that in particular right now. But that's just something to note as a sidebar of what we're up against. We're up against an organized political religion that has always been deeply infused within the power structure of religion and or government. Just like we, we've aligned ourselves under Christ, the heavens. That's what's above. Well, you have those agents and ministers of Satan who have aligned themselves with the God of this world, the Baphomet, who is below. So those who are above and understand the world according to the Bible and God understand that we must be careful of anything that's within the lap of the Baphomet. Because what's in the lap of the Baphomet separates the people on earth from the, the God above. Are y'all following me here? This is how the Baphomet gets what? This is how he initiate more people in his army through Farmer Kick. Right? 
Sickness is a weapon. Okay? You can control people who are sick. You can control people who are dependent on, on what? The pharmacists and others to survive. So sickness is a component that Satan needs to keep the world under his power. And this is why usually on Patreon and others, I try to go into the power of being healthy to not depend on Pharma Key because Pharma Key comes with other adverse scenarios, side effects, right? But I digress on that. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. But as you can see, Lucifer, I'm going to tie him to the serpent in a moment, right? He's represented as male and female. Remember that. Male and female is the God of this world. He can appear male to the elite powers who worships him, like the Asian Dalai Lama and the Pope and all that, or he can appear female. Or he can appear female. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break this down to the lowest, lowest denominator for you all. Keep in mind, folks, this is a very special lesson today. Usually I go into, you know, you know, which is well, good, virtue on how to operate into the church and one amongst another and the civility that comes with God's law. I usually try to do that on the Sabbath, but I'll say, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do one of those lessons that we used to do years back on the Sabbath, right? So I'm going to do one of those today. Usually, we, we, you know, I just like, like Sabbath used to be my class, <laughs> believe it or not, where I go into the name of God, uh, the 12 lost tribes found. That was just the original school I would do on the Sabbath just to let everybody know that what? There's a lot of information the evildoers have hid for, from us. So I usually, those lessons like I'm doing, uh, the lessons I'm like I'm, what I'm going to do today, excuse me, I usually save it in a constructive way for the academy, but here's something special. We're going to give you something today along those same lines, those old classes. Let's first start off by going into what they say within the religion of Judaism concerning Satan, right? Okay, Judaism, let's give Judaism's view on Satan. You very rarely hear their take on Satan. It's a different theological view than Christians, right? So under Judaism, let's go into their view on Satan under the Jewish religion, right? Elder Lawyer, we're going to start about, let's see, while Satan's, Let's get it here. Mm -hmm. Let me get it here. Let's see. Satan's contradictory, right? Wait, let me get this. Satan's status, Samuel. One second. Yeah, right here. While Satan's identification right there yes sir let's read it matter of fact start start with the talmudic image of a satan contradictory yes sir while satan's identification let's start there yes sir while satan's identification with the abstract yetzer hara remains uniform over the sages teachings he is generally identified as an entity with divine agency with divine agency come on for instance the sages considered Satan to be an angel of death, later given the name Samuel. Later, now the Jewish people under who? Under Judaism states that what? He is generally identified as an entity 
of divine agency. For instance, the sages considered Satan to be an angel of death. Read. Later given the name Samuel. Later given the name Samuel, who's also the angel over Rome or Edomites, mind you, according to their records, their books. Come on. Since God prohibiting Satan killing Job would imply that he would otherwise be able to do so. Come on. Yet despite this syncretization with a known heavenly body, Satan is identified as the Yetzer Hara in the very same passage. He's identified as what? Yetzer Hara in the very same passage. Okay, now check out the highlight, brothers and sisters here. This thing keep on. Check out the highlight here. Right? Check out the highlight. Read it. Satan's status as a physical ent entity is strengthened by numerous other rabbinical anecdotes. One tale describes two separate incidents where Satan appeared as a woman. He appears as a what? Appeared as a woman. He appears as a woman. In order to tempt Rabbi Mir and Rabbi Akiva to sin. In order to tempt Rabbi Mir or Rabbi Akiva into sin. So we know according to the Judaism understanding of Satan, he doesn't appear just as a man, right? He can appear as a goddess. Remember I told you that. And some people ask, well, how did this go? How would this have anything to do with racism? Follow me. One tell describes two separate incidents where Satan appeared as a woman, read, in order to tempt Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Akiva into sin. Come on. While another describes Satan taking the form of an ill-mannered, diseased beggar in order to tempt the sage Polymiu into breaking the mitzvah of hospitality. Come on. Another passage relates that Satan once kissed the feet of Aha Bar Jacob for having taught his students that his, ob that his objectionable actions are done only to serve the intents of God. Okay. So that's another thing. Listen to me clearly. We have to get out of the Christian understanding that we've, we've been taught, the simplicity we've, taught, we've been taught concerning Satan. And I'm going to show you in history, he have appeared to leaders, not just as a man, but as a woman. Satan is a real being. Some people might ask, well, what does this have to do with racism? Bear with me. I'm going to show you. I started off by showing you the religion of Islam, the crescent moon. Also, it's connected to the Knights Templar I'm going to show you. These are the religions they would utilize as a Trojan horse under the guise of bringing forth a righteous religion or a way of life, a way of control over a particular people who they must destroy before the prophecy. So they would... So Satan would give them a religion to convert and or destroy us. Their Trojan horse was religion. Modern day Christianity and Islam. That's right, folks. They were both sent by the serpent. And secretly, their kings, their generals, and those of high ilk separately, especially the Jesuit, Jesuit order of the Roman Catholic Church, would worship the deity of the Baphomet secretly and sacrifice to that Baphomet in order to gain power and understanding on how to consolidate power and or to destroy Yaakov, Jacob. Jacob, let me show you. Let's go to Psalms 83, Elder Lawyer. 
Now, this is where the racism part plays out. Everything I'm telling you today will be proven. Let me get this up so that they can see it, Elder Lawyer. Mm -hmm. Psalms 83. Yes, sir. Psalms 83, verse 1. Go ahead, read it. Yes, sir. Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They that hate God have lifted up the head. Now, why is it there's people on the earth, whole countries of people who truly hate the God of Israel? Well, they hate the whole concept or understanding that the Most High would have a chosen people. They hate the fact that God chose a people, so Satan embraced them for his people. So since they're not of the chosen stock of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Gentile nations aligned themselves, you know, with Satan straight out. So they hate God because God chose a people. So usually when the Bible is spoken of and God is spoken of, these are the people who would come and say, well, there's other history of spirituality which outdates the biblical principles. Mm -hmm. This is why even though the biblical principles are right, they'll still challenge its validity. Why? Because they hate the God who chose a people. Now, it would have been fine if those people would have been the chosen. So David understood that the majority of the earth have aligned themselves with Satan. So he's saying here, help me defeat your enemies. Because by, by default, hating you since they cannot beat you, they cannot win against you. You hurled them to this realm. They cannot beat you because the gods, they serve a lesser gods. Because they can't fight against you, they're going to take out their vitriol against us. This is how they fight God indirectly by destroying God's people. They can't win against him. But we're, there's no place for us to go. There's no place for us. To, we're here. So they say, we can't, we can't fight against him, but we can darn sure deceive and kill his people. And this is why it's important to understand who we are. Because the serpent works in deceit. See? You have another people claim to be us, so that we're looking around for our identity and say, well, no sense in looking there. He works in deceit. And remember what I showed you, what was in the Baphomet's lap. The apothecary for pharmacy. Remember, I've told you that today. So David says what? For lo, in fact, verse one, keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So there's nations of people, Gentile nations who hate our God. Buddhists hate our God, folks. Hindus hate our God. I don't even got to tell you about the religion of those that's overseas claiming to be us. They outright hate Christ. And when we say, well, let's go into the Torah, they say, well, no, we got other records we, we, that we respect outside of the Bible. So they hate our God too, but they'll make us believe symbolically through media that they're following Torah. They hate our God because they know we're the chosen. For lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they that hate the, 
hate thee, have lifted up the head. Read. Three, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have consulted against the hidden ones of God. The Most High have us for himself. We are his hidden ones. So because they cannot attack or beat us frontal, not just because our intellect and physical prowess, they know they can't engage us in war hand to hand. So they must trick us into what? Dying in war. Whether it be psychological war, biological war, or even sending us off to fight in their wars. Because they cannot fight us or beat us frontal, they must make us sick. They must destroy us. They must do other means of destroying us. And that's why the Bible states here, they take crafty counsel. The crafty counsel is, how do we destroy God's people without them actually realizing we're destroying them? How can we get them on board with destroying themselves? That's crafty counsel because why? They can now have plausible deniability. Hey, I don't got nothing to do with that. That's your people doing that. With no one out there watching or recognizing the engine that's fueling everything that makes us look less than people. See? They take crafty counsel. Right? Read. Four. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Hold up. Let us cut them off from being a nation of people. See? Because if they know they're Israel, then what? They'll understand their enemies. They'll understand that this is a religious war, a holy war against our people. Folks, and I'm going to tell you, this is how they trick you. Satan will trick you by claiming that, okay, you can have an agent who say, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in nothing. He's a liar. He's a Satanist. See, one thing about atheists, one thing about Satanists, folks, there is no rules for them. There is no rules for them. They say, well, I'm just questioning out of all folks. You have to realize this. You notice how atheists never go up and debate other beliefs. How many times do you see them try to attack Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims? Their whole focus is to do what? Is to discredit the word of God, the Bible. That's their only, that's their biggest problem. They're not atheists, folks. They're Satanists. And they know the only, the only book who can expose their true intentions is the Bible. Oh, I don't believe nothing at all. They're liars. They're Satanists, folks. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's the target, folks. The target is that the chosen people through bloodline who went into captivity for a curse, they would work through the world political structure as well as the religious structure to keep this council in place. Let's cut them off from being a nation. We can give them belief, give them religion, but never include the history of them being Israelites in it. Give them Christ. Tell them about Christ, the virtue and the wisdom of, why, of, of, of the virtue, the, the virtue of the righteous women and the power of the prophets within Torah. Teach them all, but make them believe that's us. Never tell them that they're the people or the gig is up. Cut them off from being what? A nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's the council, folks. Religiously and politically, this council is in place right now. Up until this present time, they've, everything they've actually put their money into was to enforce this particular conversation. We'll help them. We'll be down with them. But we can never let them know that negative is being done against them by us. Because they are the children of Israel. 
See, we can never let them know that they're under attack, being treated less than everyone else because they're in fact God's people. And if we don't stop them, God will raise them above all of us. He'll raise them. Right? Cream comes to the top. And folks, inherently, if they if left alone, they know we would succeed. If you just left us alone and did nothing at all, they know we, we, we would succeed, folks. This is why they've aligned us with everything against God. They've aligned us with, with the letter group. They've aligned us with debauchery, the deletion of children. And made it a political agenda knowing that all of those actions are against our laws. It's against Torah. That's why they've aligned us with it. That's that crafty council. Because they know it's against our moral codes. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Make sure they remember nothing. You can have, matter of fact, tell them they let them know they're African. Let them become pan-African. And a matter of fact, we'll put money behind that because there's no promise for Africans anyway. And while they're doing that, we'll take the state of Israel. And by default, by ruling Israel, we'll, <laughs> we're going to take all the resources in Africa anyway. Because God's chosen people in the Bible pr prophetically controls the world. There's no prophecy nowhere in the earth that in any prophecy. Not even, and you have the conscious community going into Egyptians and all that. Where's your Egyptian prophecy, prophecy that shows that at the very end, our people will rule the earth? It doesn't exist. But that's in the Bible. It's in the Bible that at the end of this, when Christ returns, that we rule. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Read. Five. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are a confederate against us. This is an organized plot. Greater than a conspiracy against our people. And I'm going to show you throughout all of history how they've done this today. And time and, and key points at key points of the height of our power within history, they have they have dismantled us politically and religiously. And I'm going to point out today who's behind it. Let's read verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom, Edomites, and the Ishmaelites. And you notice the Arabs are next. It's the so-called Europeans who are Romans and Arabs. They've been working in tandem <clears throat> against us since our fall. Both of them. Both of them have been working lockstep against the children of Israel to keep this conspiracy in play. This is why this history of how Rome financed, that's right, folks, financed the Muslim destroyers or those that were behind Islam who began to convert us in Africa. See, we were predominantly, we predominantly understood that we were Israelites in Africa before this. So you had the, the new satanic pagan Christianity uh, uh, financing missionaries and all that to come find us in order to bring medicine to help us. And religion to only bring us back under the power of the Baphomet to destroy us. Christianity the deceitful modern day Christianity, which was used as a cover to, de to find and destroy the children of Israel to keep this conspiracy going. And also Islam, the crescent moon that you see right at the foot of the Baphomet. They would work together in tandem, Arabs, politically, 
religiously and otherwise to keep what? Israel from ever finding out that we're the people. That's what they have done. Okay. So if they say that their religion is a way of life for them, that's their business. I know the origin of Islam. It's called Persian mythology, rooted in Babylonian mysticism. I've done the history. I got a book right over there. That's right, folks, the religions of the world. You can't come into my neighborhood and say, well, it's just a way of life. P praying on the ignorance of our people who have no idea that we're the children of Israel. You can't play that on me. OK, we know the witchcraft you are a part of, the sorcery, the evil, the polytheism and worships of many gods. You have tricked our people long enough. Let's go down, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse six, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. I, it got the rest of them because everyone else fall in place. That means there's a united front like the United Nations who are in collusion of keeping this conspiracy away from our people that we are the, in fact being attacked by the whole world based on the fact that we're the children of Israel and after their empire fall, they know Christ is bringing an empire, a righteous world that we can reign and rule from. That's the true narrative of the Bible. We weren't meant to be in a low state forever. But two powers cannot operate at the same time. So I'm not going to kid myself and ever think to march and all this stuff for equality. Equality is a, a bunch of nonsense. There have never been equality in this earth and there'll never be equality. Christ isn't going to share his empire with anyone. So neither do we think Esau would. The only reason the other nations are helping Esau is because what? They get power by extension of him. That's why they have been, they've plotted themselves against our people. He's given them their power to destroy us. So we got to get out of this equality game, that con game they have out there when it comes to equality. There will never be equality. Equality means we're asking the enemy for something to help us. That's what equality means. The question is, if you have to go to a person with power for equality, that shows the true position in prophecy according to the Bible. Who is prophesied to have power to give you? Rome, the fourth beast. Equality is a, is, 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 is a straight con. It's a game. To make you believe that, 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 that they're going to relegate power to, to us knowing our prophecy? It's a con game that comes around every election cycle. Let's go down to the uh, real quick elder lawyer. Mm -hmm. 12, 12. 12. Who said... Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. If the people don't know their identity, if they don't know their identity, what happens? Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. We can control and possess the children of Israel's children. If they don't know the Israelites, they definitely don't know who we are historically. They definitely don't know that we're the people who destroyed them uh, in ancient times who warred against them in ancient times. So if they don't know the Israel, they don't know my intentions against them. So this is why folks, even though American and Western world is championing, championing and always talking about uh, freedom of religion, you notice they, they will not give the same respect to when our people begin to recognize and identify as Israelites. You notice that? We become a seven day Adventist. We become a Jehovah Witness, a Baptist. Hey, you can become an atheist. You can become a Satanist, and they won't have any problem. 
If an Israelite today came out and said, well, I renounce being an Israelite and I, I, I've taken on the, the principles of Satanism. Don't you know they'll have them on CNN tomorrow? <laughs> they'll have them on CNN tomorrow. Now, that's interesting. Now, let's talk about it. Folks, us understanding where Israel is the key. The conspiracy is so that we can never find out. Once we find out, everything else makes sense. And now we can begin to work towards a unified front towards this kingdom that was prophesied by first getting on cold with one another. And this is what the enemy fears. Not that we would hate or people would hate other people. No, nothing to do with that. They're afraid what happens when we begin to operate with one another civilly and respectfully as God intended when he gave the, gave the law to Moses. This is what they fear. But I digress. Where are we going here? That old serpent. That old serpent, let's, let's jump in. Let's jump in. I'm going to show you how the Most High works this out. He does this, boy. He, I uh, mean, I'm going to show you how he do it. Brothers and sisters, there was a sister that came on to Patreon yesterday. Elder Lawyer, I don't know if you were listening, but there was a sister that came on to Patreon Right. And she said her husband was about to. Her and her husband was going to buy a new car by the name of Alpha Romeo. Mm -hmm. Alpha Romeo. Right. I looked up the car a little bit. You know, the car look all nice or what, what have you. Like this here. Looking all nice and what have you. Right? All nice. Look at that. Nice car. I looked it up. Alpha, Alpha Romeo launches U.S. comeback after 20 years. Right? And it's deep that she asked me to look into this. This car. The history of this car. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And not that she brought it up, Elder Lawyer. It's uh, in 2018. I was actually going into a lesson uh, on the Jesuits and Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. I was putting it together. A matter of fact, I have the lesson I was putting together on my uh, my, my little USB thumb drive. Mm. And it's the same time they were coming out with when apologetics started coming out from anywhere, right? Where they wanted to creep their way into the Hebrew community out of nowhere, coming in unassuming as if they were just interested in what Hebrews or Israelites were teaching. Very conniving, like your apologetics. Boy, wait till y'all see what I got today. She sent me this and said, me and my husband was going to buy this car from Italy called the Alpha Romeo from Italy, mind you. But then I looked into the history of it. Where you have the serpent. Look at this. Look at this. Where you have the serpent. Consuming or eating a man. Now, the reason why this was deep, because I was doing a lesson on the Knights Templar, the Jesuits, the Satanists 
who worshiped the Baphomet behind closed doors, the male and female deity, or the mother goddess. They fake and make everyone believe that it's Mary, but no, folks, it's the goddess, Satan. Here it is. You got Italy, a car where the serpent is eating a man. And then you have the cross, like the red cross, of the Catholic Knights Templar. Right? Why all of a sudden they're going to introduce this into the U.S. after 20 years? What symbolically, what are they showing concerning the history of this emblem? And what do we have to be concerned about now that they're introducing it through symbolism here in America? Hmm. Well, but hold up. <laughs> I told y'all we have something good for y'all today. Hit that like button. Hit the like button. Elder Lawyer, right? Elder Lawyer, let's go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I need you to go to Genesis. Matter of fact, let's go to that old serpent. That old serpent, right? Let's break down that serpent first. Right? Let's go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Revelation 12 and 1. Matter, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to go to one to yet. Mm -hmm. Let's go and just identify the biblical serpent. Yes, sir. Verse 9. Verse 9. So let's identify this serpent real quick, right? Verse 9, right? Mm -hmm. Read. Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. That old serpent. Called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan. And Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. Which does what? Which deceiveth the whole world. Which deceived the whole world. So Satan has the power of the principalities and powers of the air. He used frequency. He used media as a tool, as a tool of control. He used media, the airwaves to deceive the people. Now, remember folks that I showed you what was on the lap of the Baphomet who gives insight to the governments and religions of the world in order to come against the righteous within the world. That's right, the phylactery, the stick with the snake around it that you see at every pharmacy. Right? Read. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we know that old great dragon or serpent is the devil. The devil, right? Are you following me? The devil, right? Italy. Italy. The serpent. Eating a man, the Red Cross, the Red Cross of the Knights Templar, the Jesuits or the Dark Knight who works as a faction within the, the Catholic society. But these are the Dark Knights without rules. Their power is to work in every area or function within the world. Okay? To keep Esau's power from one generation to the next. The Jesuits or the Red Cross 
Folks, they're not working with the same rules we work with. They are satanic mercenaries. They can be nice, they can be good, they can be evil. They can work in philanthropy or they can, they can work by poisoning or murdering people. There is no rules. The power of the Templars is to keep Esau's power intact by any means necessary. And I'm going to do a lesson on that. I'm going to put it together. I don't know if I'll do it in the academy. I'm still working on that. But when she gave me this image, it reminded me of a lesson that I put away a long time ago. Exposing the Jesuits Knights Templar. Elder Lawyer, let's go to Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25. You know what? No, I'm, so I'm saying because I got all of the. I got the white papers and I got some of the history already together. I'm trying to think whether or not I'll just fit it in within this academy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll come back to you all on that. I may fit it in in this academy. Right. Real quick, Elder Lloyd, let's go to Genesis 25 real quick. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me get it here. Follow me, folks. I'm going to show you how Satan, as you can see the title, Satan. Let me see here. One second. Sa racism and the serpent. We know the serpent to be Satan, according to the Bible. We know, according to the religion, Judaism within Judaism, Satan can appear as a god or goddess. The Baphomet is transgen transgenderism, which is what? The acknowledgement or worship of the Baphomet who is Satan himself, for those who have missed it, right? Let's go now, Elder Lawyer, to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis 25. Yes, sir, Genesis 25 and 21. Genesis 25 and 21, read it. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Why am I in pain with, this, with these children? I, I'm, you know, I'm blessed to have children when I couldn't. Why is this pain so unbearable? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. When she went to inquire of the Lord, this wasn't just a prayer. And in the academy, I'm going to show you through extra biblical text who she went to to find out what was going on in her womb. Read. 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two manner of people will be separated. Instead of one nation, eventually through time, these two children will become two separate, distinct races on the earth with two distinct prophetical, prophetic purposes. With two distinct prophetic purposes. One would be one nation, which is what? The Israelites. And another would become another nation. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Come on. And the elder shall serve the younger. So it was meant, according to prophecy, for the elder, the child who comes out first, to serve the younger child. This is prophecy. So, of course, the first child that come out believed that he should be heir or king or prince over the earth. So he'll feel slighted if, a young, if his younger brother come in and get what he believed prophetically belongs to him through bloodline. So eventually the firstborn would come out upset. I mean, eventually would become upset after he learned the prophecy. The elder shall serve the younger. Read. Verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. There were what? There were twins in her womb. There were twins in her womb, as was foretold. Go on. And the first came out red all over. Red like, what? All over. All over. Like in hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. The one who was meant to serve his younger brother was red. 
There's no such people as white people. Okay? Let me make that clear. There's no, listen, this page is white that we're looking at. Right? This page is white. But look here, folks. Templar's signal or sign, same as the Roman, was red because they were given the power of the sword through Isaac to rule by the sword. Blood or red represents Esau because they're not white. They are red. Right? The first came out what? Red all over like in hairy garment and they called his name Esau. And they called his name Ishaw, Esau, the firstborn. Right? Read. 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's hill, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. So here it is. Jacob came out, and there's no describing him at all. Why? Because he has hue. He has what? Melanin like everyone else living in the earth. Right? So there was a battle in the womb for what? Who would become heir to all we see? Who will control the earth from, that's right, from the garden? The garden or the heart of, gar of the garden is modern day Jerusalem. You rule Jerusalem, you rule the earth. You rule Jerusalem, you rule the earth. So the first came out red, that's Esau. Now let's go to where Esau ended up losing his blessing. Now he sold his birthright for one morsel of meat. But let's go to Genesis 27 where he lost his blessing. Jacob came in while Esau went hunting. And our father Isaac blessed our father Jacob to become heir to, to everything you see in the earth today. Right? That's right. That means the earth really belongs to us. Have we received that promise yet? Not, of, not yet. But the Gentiles who have conspired against us, they know of this prophecy. And this is why they hate Christ. Because Christ was the one prophesied to bring forth the prophecy where Jacob would rule in the earth again. Right? Are y'all following me here? Where Jacob would rule in the earth again. Now let's go straight to Genesis 27. Let's go. Come on. Genesis 27 and verse number 39. Let's go straight to it. Read. Yes, sir. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live. By thy sword you shall live, Esau. Esau begged his father, Is there anything you have for me? Jacob will own everything. And our father Isaac told them, there's nothing I can give you. Anything you get on this earth, Esau, you're going to need the sword to take it. And this is why Esau began to colonize and take other countries. Because why? If you already have a country, there's no need to colonize. But if you don't have a promise... And living in the mountains, starting with the mountains of Mount Seir, then the mountains of Russia, any power given you must be the power you get by killing other people. And who gifted him with that? Isaac. Because the prophecy was, it was out there that if Jacob falls, if Jacob sinned against God by default, no other people can rule in this earth outside of God's people, his bloodline. So if we're not ruling, by default, Esau become the leader of this earth. 
and all of the Gentiles will follow him because their power is an extension of him. The same way when we're in power, the other nations began to align themselves under our power. Like David had other races in his army and all that because the Gentiles are just pieces on the board. Okay. The Gentiles are just pieces. They go who they go to whichever side that have power. And it says here, and Isaac, his father answered and said unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Read. And of the dew of heaven. Read. From above. And by thy sword shalt thou live. You shall live by the sword, Esau. Read. And shalt serve thy brother. And as long as your brother is in line with the law, in line with the promise I've given him, you must serve him. See, this is why Esau promotes debauchery, evil, sin amongst our community, understanding the law of Torah. As long as our people are sinning in number, by default, they rule the earth. See, <laughs> that's, that's the law. That's the rules. As long as we willingly partake of the wrong side of, of, of the garden and eat that fruit, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. As long as we take a bite of that fruit, Esau is in position by default. And by thy sword shalt thou live, read. And shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass. So you think Esau is trying to give up his power only to serve us? Are you kidding me? Esau would very well destroy the whole earth before he allowed that to happen. He would very well destroy the whole earth before he allowed that. Because, but he know the prophecy. So in order, because he loved ruling. So in order, he think he can sustain his power as long as he can continue to have Israel sin against our God. As long as our people running around like sexy red and, and all these others and women out there showing themselves as harlots. As long as our brothers following behind the evil, as long as we begin to sin against God and not establish ourselves as men of God, why do you think that the record companies and others will always promote evil and wickedness? Why do you think even though Denzel is probably the best actor that have ever entered the earth, he didn't get an award until he played a crooked, wicked man? And I need y'all to check that out. Why do you think so? They'll put money behind that. Because as long as we operate under that image, Esau, our big brother, rules by default. And therefore, he don't have to utterly destroy the earth. As long as we're sinning, he consolidates and keeps power. Hence the reason the importance of us to come back under our God, our Bible, and get on code according to God's law. Right? Let's finish reading. Yes, sir. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob. And Esau did what? And Esau hated Jacob. And Esau hated Jacob. Read. Because of the blessing wherewith he blessed, it, he blessed him. Because he knew that the prophecies were etched in stone. Esau hated Jacob. He knew the prophecy that eventually we would have rulership for an eternity. So Esau has bribed all these other nations, East Indians, Arabs, and all of them in alignment together to help him consolidate and keep power. He have always dealt with social engineering, moving people around to align themselves against his only real prophetic threat. His own, and let me tell you folks, He promised that what? He promised he hated Jacob, right? 
And read it, Elder Lawyer. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Come on. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Read. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. I'm coming after Jacob. I'm coming after you. It's all about power and rulership prophetically, folks. They'll make you believe the Bible doesn't matter, but everything they're doing is, is to stave off the prophecies in it. They're telling you, oh, I'm an atheist. I don't believe, but guess what? No sooner as they're you know, amongst themselves, they got our books open. They got that Bible open. Oh, we got to stop Jacob. Oh, Jacob is finding out he's Israel now. His family is doing less crime and evil. Uh, we got to do something. They'll tell you they don't believe. But the political construct tells us that they understand the prophecies according to the word. The folks, if they didn't believe, they would not have worked politically to, to, to have our Torah and be what? Recognized in the Middle East as the people. But they got people in the Western world believing, ah, oh, but who knows whether or not Christ was born? Whoever known whether or not the Israelites existed, they'll say all that crap over here to disrupt our people who are ignorant to the fact that we are the children of Israel. To destabilize us. But they're all up in this book, folks. This book is powerful. And I'm going to use this book to expose, to expose them today. Because Esau had a son by the name of Zepho. Speaking of Atalia, right? Because why? The alpha, uh, the, the, the emblem I showed y'all earlier. Let's go back to the emblem. Let's go back to the Alpha Romeo. It's an Italian car. So how do we link all this together? Well, let's go to the book of Genesis 36. Right? Right? Let's go here. Let's go to the book Genesis 36, right? Elder Lloyd? Yes, sir. Genesis 36, verse number one. Come on. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Let's get there so they can see it. Now you notice I showed y'all the Italian car and that emblem, right? What that represents. I'm going to get, get it in a moment. Let's go here. Genesis 36. Let's go down to Zepho. Matter of fact, let's go, let's go to Genesis 36 and 1 first. Genesis 36 verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Who is Edom, right? Now mind you folks, the Bible stated in prophecy that what? It stated that Esau, that, that two nations were in the woman's womb. Two nations shall be separated from thy, thy, thy bow. So now here is when Esau becomes a separate nation. He, was, he, he went into Mount Seir. That's right, climb that mountain like you see in 300, like you see that Nephilim climbing that mountain to speak to the seers. Esau climbed the mountain and connected with the serpent, Satan. He says, my brother have the kingdom. Give me power. Give me power to oppose my brother. This is where Satan went to gain power. Mount Seir. You will never hear anyone, folks, break it down like you get into this today. Because what they'll do is they go and show an Esau, but they don't show the religious connection of how this is where he found Lucifer, Satan, the serpent. This is where he got the blueprint to come against us. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom, and he's the what? Let's go down here, Elder Lawyer, yes, the sir. eighth verse. Verse eight. Thus will Esau and Mount Seir 
Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom now. Read and another nation. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites. The father of the Edomites, where? In Mount Seir. In Mount Seir. In Mount Seir. In Mount Seir. Y'all see that? Hold on, something's going on with this camera. One moment. It's the light. Shining on it. Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead, you can turn the light down for me on that side. If you sunlight. Oh, it's a sunlight? Yeah. Ah, I got it. It's yeah. fine. Oh, we got sunlight coming in here. That's yeah. fine. All right. Now it says what? Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse number nine. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. In Mount Seir. Seer, folks. Now let's keep that for a second because in particular there's a grandson of Esau by the name of Zepho. Let's go straight to it, other lawyer. Verse 10. These are the names of Esau's sons. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz. Eliphaz. The son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Bashamoth, the wife of Esau. Read. And the sons of Eliphaz were Timon, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam, and Kanaz. Zepho, Gatam, and Kanaz. Now, today I can't go into how Zepho was locked up in Egypt while our forefathers was there. We locked his behind up, and he escaped. Okay? I'll show that in our lesson, Who's Edom, in the Academy Week 4. Okay? But we locked his behind up. Some men came and broke him out and he ended up escaping and eventually went into Cyprus. And later, Italy. Right? But let's, since we're talking about Italy real quick or Italians, let's now go to the book of Jasher. Because now it's time to find out who Zepho is Esau's grandson who began a war against us while we were in Egypt. We locked his behind up. He ended up getting arrested. Right? And, and some people broke him out and he still, after that, began to do what? Seek to pay countries to get more mercenaries to fight against us. And that's during ancient times of Egypt, folks. The Esau's Edomites are coming against us. But I digress. I don't have a lot of time to deal with those records. I do with that in the academy, but we're going to give you an overview. Right? In the book of Jasher, it reads, an ancient book of Jasher in a translation based on the original Hebrew with the original introductory notes and English. From the original Hebrew into English, folks. This is records of our forefathers. Don't let anyone tell you that the book of Jasher isn't legitimate, okay? The book of Samuel as well as the book of what? Joshua speaks of this record, okay? The elect, the upright ones, including Moses, had this record. But it gives us some insight of history that you can't find in the Bible concerning particular characters, such as Zepho, Right? So, let's go straight to it. Zepho, right? Hold on. Let's go straight to it. We're going straight to the book of Jasher, chapter 61. Right? Chapter 61. Start at the, uh, let's see. Start at the 23rd verse, Elder Lawyer, right here. Yes, sir. The book of Jasher, chapter 61, verse 23. At the revolution of the year, the troops of Africa continued coming to the land of Kittim to plunder as usual. 
And Zepho, son of Eliphaz, son of Eliphaz, who we read in Genesis 36, heard their report, and he gave orders concerning them, and he fought against them, and they fled before him, and he delivered the land of Kittim from them. And he delivered the land of Kittim, which is Cyprus today. Read. 24. And the children of Kittim saw the valor of Zepho, and the children of Kittim resolved to make Zepho king over them. So this is when Esau began to rule in Europe, first starting in the Greek island of Cyprus. Esau is in Japheth. He's not from Europe. This is how he got into Europe, folks. That and then he they really were able to spread like wildfire after Alexander the Greek. Alexander wasn't a Persian through blood. He was an Edomite. So let's dispel that garbage that that, that Europeans are Japheth. The European plains were originally Japheth until Esau came there to conquer with the sword. Follow and follow good. Read. And he became king over them. And whilst he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands. And their king Zepho went at their head, and they made war with Tubal. They made war with Tubal. Who is Tubal? Tubal are the Japhetic people you read of in the book of Genesis 10. This is how Esau began to conquer Japhetic lands. Tobal is a son of Japheth. Now, when you look in history, the king, that's right, King uh, 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 Zepho is buried in what? Cyprus. I am not for Cyprus to this day. I know. I've been there. But in the annals of Cyprus, he's known just like any other king as if he was always there as what? The indigenous people. But he's, he wasn't indigenous. So you have people who will find the records and believe that white people are Japhetic people not realizing how they were able to morph themselves and fuse themselves within any society and state claim to the land as the people. Listen and listen good. Read. And their king Zepho went at their head, and they made war with Tabal and the islands, and they subdued them. The Greek islands, go on. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for him. They renewed his government. Now Esau is setting up governments now. Read over in Europe. Read. And they built for him a very large palace as royal habitation and seat. And they made a large throne for him. They made a large throne for him, folks. This is the throne your Pope sits on till this day. Made a palace for him and a throne. This is the throne that all your popes sit on. And they have deceived the world into believing that these thrones were given through Peter. Okay, and the discipleship that was given through Christ. No, these thrones were set up thousands of years before Christ was born in Italy. Read. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Kittim and over the whole land of Italia. The whole land of what? Of Italia. The whole land of what? The whole land of Italia. The whole land of Italia. For 50 years. For 50 years, Italy. Italy. The papacy have nothing to do with Christ. They set up a satanic throne and another name for Zepho, Esau's grandson, is Janus, the god Janus. After he died, the Cypriots and all these people put him in the pantheon of gods and called him God Janus. And Janus was known that after he set up his palace there, Zepho, there was a gateway, a door where Satan would come through to help direct his empire. And that same doorway is at the Vatican right now. 
Part two coming up. Part two coming up. Let me work this light. Do something with this light too. One second. <laughs> One second, folks. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that He used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. All right, let's go. Okay. We have a light shining in on this. I got to fix that. One moment. One second, folks. I'll be right back. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that He used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.
fucking sheet. It's just really sick. Uh. All right, one second. Yep, that's better. That's way better. Yeah. The water. All right, sunshine. I got to fix those things. We have a new studio, so bear with us. All right. Wait, it's good now. It's good. Yep. Cool. We are back. Part two. Part two. Now, check this out, folks. Here come the good stuff. Racism and the serpent. Now, as you all can see, hit the like button, please. Now, if y'all think this is something, wait till y'all get in this academy, folks. But I got some more stuff for you. Check this out. Let's go back, Elder Lawyer, to where we left off at, right? As you can see in the book of Joshua, and we have a lot of extra biblical texts. We're going to talk about that tomorrow in the academy. Atalia for 50 years. Who ruled in Atalia? Esau's grandson. It was told Esau he would live by the sword. His grandson, Zepho. Where did he become king over? Italy. Italia for 50 years. This is your Vatican. The pagan religion was actually brought to Italy from Mount Seir. Esau's religion he learned at Mount Seir was taken from the mountains of Mount Seir into the, Met the Mediterranean area, Cyprus, as well as Italy. Zepho. Now, why am I going here, folks? Well, the sister showed the, uh, gave me some insight on what? That car. The Alfa Romeo car. He said, Elder, you need to look into the history of that car, right? Let's go into it. Let's go into the history of that car, if you will. Because it's deeper than that car. Way deeper. But I need to show you Esau first. It's way deeper than that car. Let me show you something here. One second. Let me pull this up so I can show you all. It's way deeper than this car here, boy. Right? Because I went to the history of this car, the lawyer. Not the car, but the symbol. This symbol right here. Alpha Romeo. The Knights Templar, Esau, blood, the serpent eating a man. Right? Let's go all the way down. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Here's one of the original symbols, the serpent eating a man. But, you, but guess what? Look at this. Serpent eating a man. Right? But look at this here. This is the original Symbol. The original symbol comes from a time where the Italian family, Visconti family, and in, in, in 1494 and others, earlier in the 1400s, began to destroy and expel and, and straight kill and eradicate the Moors of Spain. The Moors of Spain were Israelites. They were converted Israelites who were converted into Islam. Jacob. I need y'all to look at that. A black man was the original. Was the original, folks. 
Hit that like button. Judah. Totally consuming and destroying Jacob according to a prophecy. In the 1400s, the late 1400s, the Fisconti family who are Edomites. And now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, after 20 years, they want this particular company to begin to sell cars in America. And you see, the secret societies are big on symbolisms, bringing out certain secret codes of what they're going to do next. Well, you don't understand why they're introducing this car and emblem if you don't understand history of what they did to us in Spain. Y'all see this? I need y'all to look at this. Now, so what we do here is we break a few things down for you. Right? So let's go to one of the original emblems in Italy till this day. The Visconti family. Huh? In Italy till this day. Showing the dragon coming against the brother Jacob. Unless you know you're Israel, you'll never understand this. Over and over again, consuming us, destroying us. And who's behind this? The Edomites. The Visconti family. The serpent people. From the bloodline of Esau and Zepho. Right? But there's more. The same time they was expelling us from Spain, there was another decree in which they began to send out what? Voyagers, explorers into the new world looking for our people here from the 10 tribes in the new world called that they renamed America. Same time they're coming against our people. They have what? They have an emblem of the serpent swallowing up Jacob. The man of prophecy. Oh yeah. So what do we do? We want to show you an original image of a Moor. See, and this is where Ishmael comes in. Ishmael comes in to lie on history and claim that that was an attack against Arabs. Esau and Ishmael always worked together to keep the name of Israel from ever being a nation. Remember that. So Arabs come in anytime they need some deception historically, they bring in Ishmael to back their lying stories and try to claim that the, the expulsion had something to do with attack on Islam or Arabs, which was a lie. It was an attack on Israelites who were ruling in Spain. This is from the National Geographic, the original Moors. Who were the Moors? Huh? Who were the Moors? Israelites. Israelites, folks. I'm going into more of this soon. You got to get in that academy, but I'm going into it. The Dark Ages, I'm going into it. So what did they do? The, the Fisconti family... That's right. Align themselves with the banks and begin to conspire and destroy our people to the point of expulsion. When you hear about the Jews being exp ex expelled from Spain, that was us, folks. It's what we're seeing today, too, folks. How they move us around and do certain things to get us out of the way. And next, you know, other people come in. It's the same modus operandi they've always used against Jacob. Right? The expulsion. The expulsion. The genesis of the expulsion decree. On March 31st, 1492, shortly after the end of the, the Granada War, 
the Catholic monarch signed the decree of expulsion, Catholics, folks, of the Jews in Granada, which was sent to all cities, towns, and lordships of their kingdoms with strict orders to not read or make it public until May 1st. It is possible that some prominent Jews tried to nullify or soften it, but did not have any success. Uh, you see that? Folks, that expulsion was our people. The expulsion of the Moors and expulsion of Israelites is Esau consolidating and taking power again over Europe because our people ruled during the Dark Ages. Hope y'all seeing this here. We rule. So anytime we gain some level of notoriety or power, they begin to work to displace or move us out of our position. So wait, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right? Right? And folks, when you look at the serpent people, you can't forget the ca the Causarians, the Causars, right? You can grab your headphones, other way. Fair use. Causars. Poland, Austria. The Khazars was once worshippers of the Siva Lingam. Right? Now they gotta be careful what I play here, right? Because you know how they are here, right? I'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow. But folks, the Khazars were called the serpent people. Christ was calling them out. Before the conversion between the 18th and 11th century, they were the serpent people worshiping Satan. So you got those who was converted from Causaria, who Christ pointed out, and I'm going to show you how he pointed them out. And then you have them working on that side, following Torah, and at the same time, from Italy, worshiping Satan, becoming the authority over Christians so that they can now use that as a Trojan horse to come into our neighborhoods and destroy us, to come into our countries and deceive us, right? I'm just being careful. I want to still keep a channel here, right? And they both financed the Knights Templar, the Jesuits, the Knights Templar. We're going to go into this. Because also, who's attached to the Jesuits and Knights Templar, folks? Huh? Jesuit apologetics. The accusations brought against the society have been exceptional for their Frequency and fierceness. Many include would be too absurd to deserve mention when they're not credited even by the cultured literary people, such as instance of the charges of the society was responsible for Francis Prussian War. They're behind the wars, the affair Dreyfus, the Panama scandal, the assassination of popes, princes, statements found in books, periodics, on and on and on. This is what? At a Catholic site that goes into Jesuit apologetic. When you hear of Jesuit apologetics, folks, it's attached to Ignatius Loyola, the dark, the dark knight. It's attached to what? The political mercenary 
faction of the Roman Catholic Church sent by Esau to disturb. Now you notice out of nowhere, when Israelites started getting notoriety in the United States, the apologetics came out using a person by the name of Vocab Malone as a front. That battle of Jacob and Esau continues. I need y'all to check this out. Out of nowhere, these guys come, but you got to look at his affiliations to know that that's just a front channel. It's a front channel, folks. You got to look at the affiliations. The Jesuits are now trying to do what? Put the cat back in the bag. They're trying to now stifle the rise of Israel. You will never see those apologetics talk about Judaism. That's against Christ. And you will never, and you really hear them talking about Catholics who are set up with a pagan religion. You'll never hear them talk about any of those two. You'll ne never hear them speak ill about Judaism and you'll never hear them speak about what? Catholics. They're the dark nights, folks. I'm just going to put that out there real quick. They're the dark nights who have now crept their way. They've been trying to conversate and try to be on conscious community sites. Now, now, why is that so weird? It's weird that they're trying to follow conscious community and try to debate there, but they're not there for the conscious community, folks. They're there because Israelites are wasting their time working with the conscious community, not realizing that the only notoriety they really get is when our people come on their platforms. Okay? That's why Kimmon on trial was so big. Because that debate included what? It was our church that was there that was a key component with that debate. Okay? And many of us supported it. So now the Jesuits are trying to go with the conscious community. And you know why? They're trying to go there because they're trying to be there as what? Ha whole place in hopes of another conversation between Israelites and apologetics. I'm going to tell you. Hey, fool me once, shame on me. Stay away from the apologetics, man. They are the Jesuits. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I digress. But why am I going there? Well, this is why I'm going there. When it comes to the Knights Templar, it comes back to this symbol. It comes back to this symbol, folks. The Alpha Romeo. It goes back to this symbol here. It goes back to this symbol. Them swallowing Jacob. They want to find their way to disturb anything when it comes to our people. Finding a way by ourselves. In order to overcome the curse that happened through the sins of our forefathers. Anytime we're trying to work out our lives and try to do something for ourselves to get out of our condition, you find them. You find the Jesuits. You find the Red Cross. You find them in our spaces looking to disturb or cause disruption. But now the Bible says what? Even Paul says that man of sin must be revealed. So the last thing they wanted me to do was to reveal their true intentions by going into history and identifying their daddy, Zepho, a Satanist. To give you the origin of the Vatican throne and have nothing to do with Christ at all. They hijack Christianity after the death of Christ and after the fall of Jerusalem. Which leads us, Elder Lawyer, to Revelations 12. Let's get there real quick. Look at, look at Jacob in their mouth. Being consumed. Destroyed by Esau. And they're doing this right out front. Right out front. And folks, the Visconti family, when you look up the Visconti family, Edomites. There's, there's a thing called the Italian War when you look it up. I don't have time to go into it today, 
The Italian War of 1494, the night 1495, was them destroying our people in Spain. Visconti, the people that was behind the war, Visconti, folks, the people who was behind the war, listen, the Visconti, let me put it up, pull up here. The descendants of Valentina Visconti are the people behind that symbol today. Alpha Romeo. And the Visconti family was behind killing our people in the, in, in the, in the Italian war. I mean, in this war right here. In the Italian war, they was coming against us. And guess what, folks? What did, they use, what did they use in warfare in their wars? Not just against us who were in Spain, but our people who was also in France. I need y'all to see this. What did they use? What did they use, folks? Germ warfare. In the war, they used Germ warfare, a breakout of syphilis. Sound familiar? In the wars of expelling us, they were using germ warfare. Syphilis. Sounds familiar? Are you now getting it with the Baphomet who has the phylactery, the, the, the pharmacy symbol on his lap? For those who've been following me this long, they were using syphilis. And sicknesses in the war back then to displace us. Look at this. And it was they was targeting all of the states where our people were living. Why am I going here? Every time you see there's a disease or a big break, uh, something that breaks out that they claim is big and all that. Always look at who they target in the midst of it to actually get the cure first. History repeating itself. Who was the Tuskegee experiment done against? Our people here in the Americas, the same way they did it back then with the Fisconti family, who, that's right, the emblem of that car are them. And at the same time, they're looking to destroy our people. Here come a car out of nowhere with, with a history of destroying our people. Huh? Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Okay. Elder Lloyd, let's go to Revelation 12 now. Yes, sir. We're going to wrap up and get ready for the academy. Revelation 12. Let's get it. All right. Same thing. What did they do when they came over to the Americas? They brought diseases. So don't forget the Baphomet with the phylactery or the pharmacy symbol on his lap. All right, other Lord, let's get Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and 1. Come on. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and a moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. A crown of 12 stars, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And pain to be delivered, read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Now let's see who this dragon is. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. The seven heads represents the seven mountains of Rome. The ten horns are the original EU, the union of the European nations that was consolidated by the Roman Empire. With a confederacy against us. Every time they would attack us and we would go someplace else, they would align themselves with Arabs. Ishmael as the conspiracy states in Psalm 83, to help them. To help their continued attack and pillage against Jacob. Read. 
Verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this is, uh, uh, this is what? This is near, uh, 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 um, Harad. The governor Harad set up by Esau, who was also an Edomite. Harad, who what? Who wanted the wise men to bring Christ to him in order for him to sacrifice Christ to their gods. He was seeking to kill the child. Edomites. The same way they, oh yeah, they, 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 they prey on the ignorance of, 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 of straight crazy people. Ignorant people. Who they deem, they think people are dumb. Oh yeah, it's a woman's body. It's her choice. These blood drinking Satanists have, have actually did what? Have desensitized the world to a degree that Unborn children aren't even safe. And it's the same people that's behind the serpent, that's behind that legislation. What better way to get in front of a future prophecy than to kill the ch child before the child has an opportunity to fulfill the prophecy? What better way? What better way, folks, to throw the prophecy? than to put political scenarios in place that would have a woman choose to destroy her own child before it's born. We're reading it right here. They, tried, they wanted to do that to Christ. They wanted him dead at birth, knowing the prophecy. What is the prophecy? The elder shall serve the younger. So Esau was waiting to get, gain political power in order to, to do what? To enforce the threat that was given by his father. The Edomites, the threat was no soon as our father Isaac dies, I'm coming after our brother Jacob. They just needed the political fortitude to do so. So when you see other people coming into your neighborhoods and all that being lined under immigration, you need to look at that entirely different, folks. This is social engineering by Esau. And he's going to use the phylactery to finish our people off. And I'm going to show you what the phylactery is. Read. Uh, verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Come on. And a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she have a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Come on. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil that and Satan. That old serpent called what? The devil and Satan. The devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. How do he deceive the whole world? He used media. He used psychology. See, but if you know you're Israel, you're not going for it. And this is why they said what? Well, any Israelites with any sense wouldn't go for it. But you got even Israelites saying, oh yeah, well Esau say we, we always took these, uh, these injections and all this other stuff. Hey, it's okay. I'm fine. Out of their minds. On one hand, you call Esau the devil. And on the other hand, you follow everything he say. He becomes your daddy. Putting and placing your people in harm's way. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, read. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, read. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him, read. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For well, the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now let's go all the way down, Elder Lawyer, if you may, where after Satan could have no more power in heaven, he did what? 13? Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, 
He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. He per the serpent persecuted the woman who brought forth th the man child. Who's the woman who brought forth Christ? Israel. So no soon as what? No soon as Christ died, resurrected, and took full power of heaven and earth, the keys, as far as hell goes, Satan was bound to this realm where he could no longer go into the ground anymore or above the firmament. He was trapped here. And at that point, he began to come after us. He began to send the armies after us. Read. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. And this is when we started fleeing. We, we went into different parts of Africa, Spain and all that. We're talking about 70 AD. We started fleeing from what? That's right. The assaults being assailed by the Roman Empire. And once we settled in Spain and others, 1400s, they began to do it again. They came against us again. In Africa, they would send Catholic missionaries till this day and still come after us. And now we're in the cities, minding our business. We don't have what? We don't have what? A pot to pee in and a window to throw it out. And they still coming after us. We're poor, destitute. And now they're, they begin to roll out stuff and saying, well, guess what? There's a disease coming for y'all. Same thing they did in Spain. Y'all better wake up. Because why? They, folks, they don't see us as the poor people we are or the destitute people we are. No. They are afraid of what they know will become. They know the prophecy. The elder shall serve the younger. So right now, we may be a bum in the street. We may be on drugs. We may be whatever. But they, that's not what they're concerned about. They're concerned about what happens when these people clean themselves up and God use them for good. And if that happens, we will pick up from where that prophecy left off with where they, one day the elder is going to serve the younger. That's what they are afraid of, folks. That's why I pointed out the Knights Templar, the symbol on the car, the serpent. I pointed it out because, folks, let me tell you. We live rent-free in their head 24 hours a day. They are afraid of what we might become if they don't intrude or disrupt. I'm going to tell you that right now. Their existence is keeping us from ever fulfilling that prophecy. Let's read it. Verse number 15. 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Water are the lies, philosophy, and evil they're, they're spewing out. Read. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And that's what the Jesuit does. That's what they do, folks. They come up with all these conspiracies to take us out. Biological warfare, psychological warfare, separating our families, indoctrinating our children against our the, the, the biblical principles. Th they're working in universities. They're working in the churches. They're working 24 hours a day to flood us with evil, wickedness, satanic ideology. Right? But Christ stated, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I need y'all to see this real quick, folks. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Knowing is half the battle. And if we don't understand our history as Israelites, we're doomed to repeat it. Because guess what? Esau, he just pulled out the same old bag of tricks. He does the same thing over and over and over again. Now let's go back real quick, Elder Lawyer, if we may. To the Baphomet. The crescent moon. Right? And don't forget, even under Judaism, 
They have what? Babylonian names for months. Talmuz is one of the, the months. Talmuz was a Babylonian god, worship. And that's on the Judaism calculation, the Jewish calculations of the months is Babylonian. So they also deal with the crescent moon as well as the Arabs. But what do they have? Male, female, transgenderism right here. Right? But look in the middle here. That's a, a what? What is that? That's an apothecary. Let me type that in. Apothecary symbol. Apoth apothecary symbol. Right? See? See right here? Let me pull it up here so you can see it. I want y'all to see this. See that? See that apothecary symbol? So what will he use with, with Esau? What insight will the devil give Esau in the Arabs? To destroy God's people. They do it over and over and over again. And we keep falling for it. And they usually seek to target our children. Oh yeah, you want to go to school? Okay, well, you got to... Hey, you, you got to get, you got to stay healthy now. Oh, your baby's born. You're irresponsible unless we keep them healthy. Because they're after the child. This is what they'll use. So what they'll do, they'll go into these immigrant com com countries. The synagogue of Satan does. He go into these countries. And he trained the poor, the, 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 those people who aren't doing anything and bring them to school over in the United States and make them doctors. Give them pharmacies so that you can't claim it's the white man doing it to you. Right. And guess what? The same thing that happened during the, the Spain and, and others, the expulsions. Before they were able to move us out of any areas in past time, folks, a so-called disease broke out first. A convenient disease breaks out and then afterwards our people are conveniently dead or get displaced or move someplace else. Only for others to come in. This has happened throughout all of history, folks. I hope, I hope y'all can tie two and two together. Huh? Y'all see that? I, I just want to make sure y'all can see it. I have to be very careful. See? Transgenderism. The ideology of the Baphomet where a man is running around with a woman's breast. And guess what? A lot of these so-called programs they have rolled out for all the medical and stuff, they got a certain people who's a minority over all these programs. Not you. Y'all see that? Now, let's show you in the book of Revelation to end this. And don't forget, folks, we started off with what? We started off with the emblem for your car, Alpha Romeo. Romeo. America didn't allow this car in. It came in after 20 years. They switched the emblem here. They switched the emblem from a black man knowing its history of the serpent swallowing our people with what? With full support from the Catholic Church to destroy Jacob, which is Revelation to 12th chapter, with them being the serpent people. Right? I want y'all to see that. But let's go now, Elder Lloyd, to Revelation 9 to show you the Baphomet and how, according to prophecy, he would administer the poison against 
the children of Israel, against, against the populations of the world. Right? There you go again. Right? One second. There you go again. Oh, the Lord, let's get Revelation 9. Yes, sir. Revelation 9. And let's start at the first verse. Speaking of the phylactery now. Yes, sir. Revelation 9 and 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. I saw a star fall from heaven. Folks, fallen stars are angels. Fallen stars are angels. Okay. Read. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Come on. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Read. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power as the scorpions, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, brothers and sisters, real quick, how do scorpions have power? Put it in the chat. What's the power scorpions have? Huh? It's tail. It has a prick or a point on it. And it sticks you to administer the poison. Huh? It sticks you to administer the poison. Huh? The sting. Thank you. So unless you understand the power of that's given in scripture, you'll never understand how it applies to what? The phylactery today. Are y'all following me here? Oh yeah. Uh, matter of fact, you can get, you can get it for free. Uh, you don't gotta pay for nothing. You get this absolutely free. Folks, nothing in this world is for free. Let me break it down for you here. Because this is how he, Ishmael and all the other nations are using this to displace us and to destroy us in plain sight. Right? So unless you understand what it's showing, you'll never know what it's showing is an angel coming down with the knowledge to teach your leaders on how to come against us, on how to make us sick. On how to kill us. This is fallen angel technology. That was there before the flood. And this is why the most high sent the flood. Because it was seeking to kill off. The righteous before the prophecies. Would, would come into fruition. Let's read it elder lawyer. Yes sir verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the earth. Or the grass of the earth. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So only those who don't have the seal of God can be tricked by Satan when it comes to this. See? If you have somebody that claim they know the Bible, but then will do everything that's rolled out by the news. Outright, you know that they're not sealed by God. Right? They're just talkers. There's no way if you are, if you are, if the prophets were living today or if the disciples were living today and the news came out with these talking heads telling everyone to go lockstep with something, Christ would have looked at the, like all of them like they were crazy and the people that was following it too. Neither any tree, but what? 
Neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. Read. And to them it was given that they should not, not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. So some of this stuff is in people. Guess what? Some people are not dying. But they're wishing they didn't listen. They know that something is different with their bodies. And this is what you happen. This is what happens when you listen to him. See? It's an orchestrated effort by Satan to do what? To destroy the righteous. Even churches were opened up to that madness. Let's read it. And to them it was given to, that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. It's a torment of a what? Of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Because when a scorpion striketh a man, or a snake or serpent bites a man, what happens? They have to get some place to receive an antidote. Usually they have to find an antidote. Sounds familiar, folks? Now do you see why they don't want you in the Bible? Because now I understand the weaponry Satan would use to destroy God's elect. And it's all voluntarily. It's all voluntary, so it gives me the power to say, thank you, but no thank you. Okay, now if somebody else want to do it, that's their business, right? But it gives me the power to say, oh, it's free. You can get it for free. Listen, thank you, but no thank you. Okay, I like my body just the way it is. Okay, because I do know how my body reacts to something naturally when it's hit with something. But what I don't know is what you got up in that stuff. I'll take my chances with how my body operates naturally. And when it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But Hades, if I'm going to have somebody do something to me where I have no idea what it is. No, thank you. Let's read it. Six. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Because why? When you go into the breakdown of this and understand of this, a lot of people, a lot of people know that they haven't been the same since they made that choice. Psychologically and all that, to a degree where if I can't have the regular quality of life that I've had before, what good is living? I can't walk. I can't speak the way I used to. My equilibrium is down. Uh, uh, cancers is going around. It makes it where people who once were full of life have no hope to live going forward because their quality of life has been taken away. I'm going to leave it there. I'll pick it up tomorrow in the academy. And all I have to say is this, folks. I don't think it's a coincidence at all that Alpha Romeo, a car, or this emblem have now been what? Have now been allowed for them to sell this car in the United States after 20 years it wasn't sold here. I believe the elites... This is symbolic for the elite saying it's time to do, that's right, what the Fisconti family did. It's time to disease and it's time to displace and destroy the children of Israel. This is symbolic right here. For those who understand history know how dangerous this particular symbol is for our people in history. The Moors were destroyed and they were able to put up these flags celebrating the destruction of the children of Israel who were the Moors. So when you see them rolling out that and don't forget this. 
The Bible says that man of sin will be revealed. Well, let's look at Zepho's house real quick, right? Right? Let's look at Zepho's house. Huh? Let's look at it. Let's look at the audience room, folks. The audience room in Italy. This room is what? It's built in the Vatican of Rome. Let's look at Zepho's room now. You know, he, they did a little renovating. <laughs> they did a little renovating. Look at the audience room for the Pope. A serpent. They spruce it up a little bit. The serpent. All right. Folks, watch out. I'm going to tell y'all what to watch out for. Watch out. Watch out. They're coming. Let me, see. I'm going to put it in. Hey, folks, look it up. The audience room at the Vatican. Type it in yourself. The audience room post Francis financial reforms rattle Vatican's old, uh, old guard. And this comes from parallels, many stories to bring forth what? One world. One world order. One world order. You got your Vaticans, you got your Jesuits, and they all up in our business because why? They understand the prophecy. If they leave us alone, if we link into our God, guess what? It's over for them. Pope's Francis financial reforms rattle Vatican's old guard. Y'all can listen to these people in the Christian church if you want. And they're outright telling you that their leaders worship Satan. Huh? Right? I want y'all to see this. The seed of Satan, you're absolutely correct. Okay, we have a lot of very informed brothers and sisters in here today look at this uh-huh we see you we see you Esau now the world sees you with that I'm going to say shalom I'm excited for the academy tomorrow brothers and sisters if you're not in the academy get on in it does much support to help this church and I'm going to tell you we're going to need each other and it's times like this that it's that, that you show your support for this church and we bring forth the information in what? A school format. So even for you new people out there who rarely come, you know, who rarely understand what this is. If you don't understand the Bible, if you, or you have questions, or even if you are a skeptic, come into the Hebrew Bible Academy and you'll see the Bible like you've never seen it before and understand its value. I'm going to tell you, Tomorrow we're going into, you got it, the creation of the universe, and we're going to break down the what? The angelic ranks first, because heaven was here before earth. The whole ranks, all of that, we break down tomorrow, and this academy will be what? Spiritual growth focus, our purpose, how to fast, what's the purpose for a man, what's the purpose for a woman, how to overcome uh, uh, I must the dark side and I'm going to go into that how to overcome the dark side when you're angry when someone upsets you because usually when you're upset a reaction comes from it right and you feel justified with the reaction well suppose there was something else in the room that caused you to respond we're not alone that and more in this academy. And here's a key, folks, just for you all. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. 
When you get that spirit in your stomach that turn, when someone rubs you the wrong way and you are about to react or say something or do something, do nothing. Do nothing. Whatever you say, you're going to regret. Whatever you do, it's sin that comes forth because it's vengeance. That's when you know another spirit have entered you. You feel it in your stomach first. You'll feel it in the quarters of your stomach. That's where you feel it first. And don't do, just do like this. Go into a bathroom and say the Lord's Prayer. And then come back with what? A clear mind to fix the situation. But in that moment, you don't want to play in that moment. Many people have died and went to prison. Died or went to prison because they couldn't overcome that moment when something entered them. That's just one key. But we're going to be talking about this spiritual growth in the academy. With that, shalom. May the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Have a great remainder uh, 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 of your Sabbath here. This lesson was a very timely and yeah, but guess what? It continues tomorrow. It's nothing compared to where we're going into tomorrow. All right. So here it is. Stay strong. Stay prayed up. Go to historytimes.org to enroll. Let's go to school. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Thank you, the Lord. I opened yes, up the book and see that the apple of your eye included me. And through the tribulation, I know I must stand for a new heaven, a new earth. Show me the way to Zion. I'm on my knees, laying my life on the line. I'm begging, please, please don't let. Please don't let